What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to track objects inside Resolve 16 with no plugins required. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I love teaching others. I do tutorials and weekly videos here on this channel. So if you have not already, click that subscribe button and tag along. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to track objects inside Resolve. Some of these may seem like very simple things to a lot of people, but a lot of these tutorials that I'm teaching you guys are leading up to way bigger stuff. So when you guys go to try to do these bigger projects, you have the basics down backwards and forward. Let's jump inside Resolve and we'll go from there. So you guys can see I tracked this object here from a review I did not too long ago on the Deity Vlov. Fantastic mic. If you guys are looking for a budget lav mic, I would check it out. I'll have links for it in the description below. Great mic. So the first thing we're gonna do is start completely fresh. We're gonna right click on our screen, go to the timeline, create new timeline. You can go to use custom settings and set it to whatever you would like it to be. I'm just gonna leave what it is, 1080p, 24 frames, that's fine. We're gonna hit create. We're gonna find the video clip that we like. I've got the exact same video clip that I used earlier. I'm gonna drag it down here in my timeline, hit out. I'm gonna hop over into the color tab real fast. I'm just gonna set a little bit of contrast in it just so it doesn't look like complete butthole. And that looks fine. We'll jump back over into the edit tab. We're gonna right click on this and we are gonna create a new compound clip. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the Fusion tab. We're gonna go ahead and make the screen just a little bit bigger so we can see. I'm gonna click off of everything. I'm gonna hit Shift Spacebar and I'm gonna be looking for the Planar Tracker and I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna hit Shift while holding the left side of the mouse down. I'm gonna unclick it and it'll add it into the timeline right there. While the tracker is selected, I'm gonna find a frame that I want it to start and I think right there is good. I'm gonna go up here to the very left top and I'm gonna start start drawing my object around it. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's fine. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to hybrid point area and instead of perspective, I'm just gonna do the very top translate. I don't need it to be rotating in 3D space. You can do that, but that's not really what I'm going for. If you had perspective, anytime you rotate an image or something, the text is gonna also rotate with it. I just want the text to stay with it. Now, most people just go right here and they hit start and it doesn't do anything and they can't figure out why it's not doing anything and they get very frustrated. It's because this tracker wants you to start at the beginning. And most of the time that will work. I don't want it to start at the very beginning. I want it to start at a point that I tell it to. So the bypass that, get to the frame that you want it to start at, go up here, and hit set and then hit go. And it's gonna lock a frame in where you want it to start. Then it's gonna start tracking and do all of its magic. Now really quick, let's say something went completely wrong and you have one or two frames that just, it went completely over here out of the way, which does happen from time to time. So what you would do is you would go to your keyframes up here in the top right, you would click on that. If this is not showing, click on your tracker, go the track and make sure this is selected right here. We're gonna zoom in here real quick and what you can actually do is you can click on each one of these keyframes. You can just delete those and then go frame by frame and fix what you need to do. With our tracker selected, we're gonna go down here to the very bottom where this button is and we're gonna make a transform node that puts basically all the information that's in that tracker in this node right here. We're gonna click off of everything. We're gonna go ahead and add a text. We're just gonna say V love because that's what it is if you're working with multiple things what i suggest to doing is going up here to the right and selecting both screens you can click on one of the nodes and hit one on your keyboard or hit two and it'll bring it up but we're just going to hit two on media out so i can see both that's going on and now you can see your text and your image at the exact same time so what we're going to do is we're going to unclick that tracker from my other nodes. I'm gonna move it over here out of the way. I'm gonna connect both of these so I can see my complete image. I'm gonna add a merge node. I'm gonna hold shift and the mouse again at the same time, bring it in. I'm gonna grab my text, drop it in, and now I can jump back over here because I can see that it dropped it in. The only problem is, is it's not actually tracking the text at all. So what we got is this little transform node that we made earlier with all the tracking information. We're gonna hold shift, mouse at the same time, and we're gonna drop it right in between there. And now we can see that it has tracked it beautifully. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the text and we're actually gonna size it accordingly to what we want. I'm actually gonna go into the paint tab. I'm gonna do an outline instead. I'm gonna make the thickness just a little bit more. Make the corner sharper. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our text. We're gonna hit shift space bar and we're gonna bring up a shadow. With the shadow node selected, I'm gonna go up here to shadow offset. I'm gonna select what I would like to do. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna soften it up just a little bit. And I'm also gonna make it be a little bit more gray instead of black. When I click on my text, I'm gonna move it over here into place where I think looks good. I think that's fine. I am gonna set a keyframe on tracking and I'm gonna go back one, two, three, four more and I'm gonna space that out just a little bit. Now, if we go through, we can see it does what it's supposed to, that's fine. I'm gonna click back on the paint tab. I'm gonna scroll down to softness and I am gonna bring these all the way up. Add a keyframe on both of them, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna bring them back down. You can change things and have those letters come in individually. I did a video on it. Uh, I'm not gonna dive into that right now, but if you wanna watch it, uh, link in the description below and card up here somewhere, uh, go watch it, it will help you out. I am not hating that, but let's say we wanna take this up a notch and we wanna add a completely 3D text inside this video clip, which I think would be completely cool depending on what you need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna unlink those. We're gonna move them out of the way just for a bit. We're gonna unclick off of everything. We're gonna go right here to a 3D text, or again, you can hit shift space bar and type in 3D text. With that selected, let's go ahead and hit one and we'll bring it up to our second image right there. Let's go ahead and type in something. We'll do the same thing, V love should be fine we're gonna go down here to extrusion and we're gonna bring the extrusion depth up which will make it that actual 3d look now let's say we want to add this to our merge but the problem is is it won't work 3d text and images will not link to 2d text and images unless you have the correct render node or merge nodes so what we're going to do is we're going to add a render 3d node i'm going to connect that to this one and i'm going to bring it up to the second screen or again you can click two on your keyboard and that'll work fine i'm going to select it under the inspector tools i'm going to go down here in the lighting and i'm going to hit enable the problem is, is it doesn't look very good because it's just turned black so what we're going to do is we're going to click shift space bar and we're going to look up lighting we're going to click on directional lighting and we're going to add that I'm gonna bring our render 3D node underneath there. I'm gonna click on our text 3D and I am gonna click a merge 3D. Let me bring that around here so it's a little bit tidier. I'm gonna connect the directional light to the 3D merge. And now we can see we have a light in there. All this is doing is the light is connected to the text and it cannot be connected to the text unless you have that merge node. And you cannot have these come out in a 2D image unless you have a 3D render node. It's rendering the 3D image into a 2D image so you can add it to your video. Let's say real quick, we wanna change the lighting for instance. So we're gonna click on the light, we're gonna hit one to bring it up here. It's a lot easier I think if you go over to inspector tools, you click on the middle transform and then you can kind of move your lighting. So let's say like there should be fine. Let's turn it just a little bit, that's fine. Let's say we wanna add one more light to that text. We're gonna hit shift space bar. We're gonna look for lighting one more time. Let's just do another directional light should be fine. I'm gonna connect it to the 3D merge as well. And it kind of lightens that up a bit. If I wanna mess with it, I'm gonna click on it, hit one to bring it up here. I'm again gonna to go to inspector tools, click on the transform, and I'm gonna kinda of just move it as I see fit. I think that should be fine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click our 3D render node, we're gonna connect it to our merge, and we're gonna take our media out, and drag it up to the top. Now you can see, boom, hello, we've got this 3D text inside of our video, and it looks dope. I'm gonna click on the render 3D, and I am gonna go right here to a transform node. I'm gonna add a transform to it, and then over here in the inspector tools, we can size it down. Then if we wanted to rotate the text, we can click back on the text, go to the transform, and we can kind of move this around and rotate it however we want. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click back on the transform and I'm gonna kind of move this in the place where I think it looks good. Sure. Then all we gotta do is unclick this transform tracker node, hit shift, bring it over here. We're gonna drop it underneath transform and in between merge, let go. 
And now, folks, we have a 3D text tracked just the same as the other. I know this looks ridiculously intimidating when you look at your node tree and it's just scattered all over the place, but when you break it down and go individually and figure out, okay, I need to go from A to B, it makes complete sense. You'll get better at it the more you toy with it and figure things out. And I don't expect you guys to do this exactly, you know, frame by frame, the exact same thing that I'm doing. I'm teaching you guys this stuff so you guys can just go create your own thing. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Take the information I'm giving you and create your own thing out of it. Tag me on Twitter and Instagram if you guys do something. I would love to see it. I would love to check out your guys' work. Well, that's it for me today, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Drop a comment below on some other tutorials, videos you want to see coming out in the future. Got some bangers in the works. I'm stoked about it. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. I'm the Iron Giant. You guys are amazing. I'm out.